how can I tell which measurement approach leads to the best SNR for my experiment? Uh, is there a recipe for this? So, well, I mean, for limit cases, uh, we can say that if we have a signal that is basically purely sinusoidal, for sure, I would like to measure my signal with the locking amplifier. At the same time, if I have a signal whose ult the duty cycle is ultra low, for sure the boxer averager will be the best choice. However, for more complex signals, what is generally the case, uh, this is no straightforward answer for, to this question. And this is because while the duty cycle is of course an important factor to consider, there might be also other things to, 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 to consider uh, when it comes to, uh, for example, the frequency of the, uh, the actual frequency of the signal, some specific noise sources, synchronous interference that are exactly the same frequency of my signal, maybe also the measured harmonics that the instrument can provide. Uh, so basically the interplay among all these factors can be very not trivial. Thereby, th therefore, uh, generally the best strategy uh, okay, for signals that are complex is to try out both approaches and then evaluate which leads to the best SNR. Mm, okay, uh, now, okay, then you must ask yourself, okay, but now do I need to basically have two instruments to then decide which one to use? Well, it turns out that uh, with uh, our instruments, uh, with the, um, our locking amplifiers, you can have both instruments in the same device, so you don't need to choose. You can compare your signals second choice of your signal and then decide which is the best measurement approach for your um, experiment. That is why now I'm gonna uh, show you a demo with uh, one of our instruments, the UHFLI locking amplifier, and measure a signal that I actually produce with the, this very same instrument. And uh, basically I output the signal and measure it with a signal input with both techniques, locking amplifiers and boxer averagers. And we can see how changing certain parameters on, on the measurements, this affect the signal-to-noise ratio of the measurement. So now I'm gonna move to the uh, software. I hope you can all see the software. Um, now, uh, what I'm doing, as I said before, uh, I'm gonna, I'm creating some Gaussian samples, Gauss, Gaussian pulses at a certain repetition rate. In this case, 2.1 megahertz. To understand how they look like, we can uh, also have a scope on our instruments where you can uh, basically run the scope and you can see now that if I zoom in, I have a train of pulses at a certain repetition rate with a certain period. We can also check for the period, so the distance in time within, between these pulses. And we can see that basically the difference is uh, exactly uh, one over the, the repetition rate uh, of, 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 the, of this frequency here. Uh, now, what we can do, we can perform a measure with both boxcar and a locking. So let's now start with the boxcar. Okay, so the boxer units on our instruments, uh, what they have is uh, uh, the so-called periodic waveform analyzer, PWA. Um, so if I now run the PWA, what I can see, I see here only just one single pulse. And this is because um, uh, what I've done, I locked the PWA to the frequency of the repetition rate of basically of my pulses. Um, and the, the, the PWA basically plots the one single cycle of my of my uh, pulse train. And this is why also, for example, here the x-axis, as you can see, is in phase, because this is basically from zero to 360 degrees, so one full cycle of my pulse. Of course, this can also be changed to time domain. And as uh, we've seen before, basically we can also see how many, the, the, the harmonics component of, of my signal. So now if I increase this, and if I go to linear, we can see basically that uh, my signal is composed by a certain amount of harmonics. So this is basically the harmonic uh, contribution of my pulsed, of my pulsed signal. Now going back to phase uh, and running again, what we can do now, we can then perform our boxer averager measurement. So what we're doing, we're gonna set the window, the boxer averager window around my signal. Okay, so copy from cursors, I activate the, the boxcar gate and we're also going to set the baseline window, basically, so somewhere where the, there is no signal uh, in order to have the subtraction between the boxcar gate and the boxcar baseline. Now I'm going to copy this from cursors. And then um, what we, the other thing that we can set is, of course, the averaging periods. Uh, now, um, uh, if you one were to put one here, each of the uh, basically boxcar gate, uh, uh, integrated gate would be sent out as a measurement instrument, as a measurement result. And this is some, uh, sometimes known as um, gated integration. 
Now, uh, going back to our, uh, we are now doing some averaging here, 256 box, basically gates before we send out the results. And this basically um, turns into a certain averaging bandwidth that is essentially defined by both the averaging periods and the repetition rate of my signal. Now, uh, in order to have a comparison between lock-in amplifiers and boxer averager, what we are doing, we are basically using, now doing a lock-in measurement uh, with the same measurement bandwidth, so that we can compare the signal-to-noise ratio apples uh, to apples. If I now do this and I run and I see I run the scope, you can see uh, uh, that oh, it's something I have to uh, I have to enable. This is enabled, okay. Um, I don't know why it's not. Okay, now you can see both. So uh, basically what you can see now that in this precise uh, configuration, what we have is that the signal to noise ratio of the two measurements is comparable. So they're, lead, they're, they're leading to the same more or less signal to noise ratio. What is interesting to see uh, is that for example here for the lock-in uh, measurements, so the first the blue line, we are measuring an average of three, about three millivolt for this case, while for the for the Boxer average, we are measuring a higher uh, average value because we are also integrating, we are also uh, basically summing all the contributions from uh, the higher uh, harmonics. Now, what we can do, we can basically, uh, uh, the, the, to see how changing the, for example, the duty cycle of my signal changes the measurement result, what we can do here, we can reduce this drastically to, for example, around 10, 10, 10 kilohertz. As you can see, already uh, basically uh, the, the width of my pulse with respect to its period so the width of the pulse itself has not changed but the the, the width uh, with respect to its period has has become much 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 smaller now we can zoom in here to increase the resolution okay and now we can see our our pulse that actually has the same width okay as before but in this new uh, ut cycle in this new repetition rate um, pulse strain has uh, like takes much much less space in time um, again, we can now have a look, for example, at the harmonics once more, and we can see now that uh, we can see that the, now the harmonic contribution of uh, my signal is much, much larger. So there are many, many more harmonics that contribute to uh, to uh, my signal. Now going back to phase, we can uh, then again run the measurement uh, here again. Now we can set the the, win, the the boxer window again around my, my signal. Okay. So this, and then I now set the baseline somewhere where there is no when there is no signal. Uh, as you can see here, uh, basically the, the averaging bandwidth, uh, given the fact that the, the, the repetition rate has changed a lot, the averaging bandwidth has also changed, uh, going very, very much lower to about 18, 18 hertz. So again, now to compare this type of measurements with the lock-in measurement, we also need to change the bandwidth of, of the lock-in to have it, uh, to, to compare apples uh, to apples. Now, if we now have a look at the plotter, we can clearly see that for the case of a box averager, what we have is we have that the signal to noise ratio is much, much better. Uh, it's much, much higher, 59 dB against the, the 23 dB of the locking uh, lock measurement. So almost uh, 40 dB uh, different. This is almost a factor of, of 100. 